Let's talk about sinusoids. You probably did this in either your trig class in high school, somewhere in calculus, or maybe in EC 180. But today we're going to talk about sinusoids, okay? Because sinusoids are going to become our phaser. So this is the beginning of our phaser analysis. And we have to talk about sinusoids because this is AC circuits. So your sources are sinusoids, okay? So although we call it a sinusoidal voltage source, that vary sinusoidally with time, or a sinusoidal current source that varies sinusoidally with time, we always use a cosine. That's the first thing I need you to understand. When I'm talking about sinusoids, it's not a sine wave, it's a cosine. That's just the standard, okay? So even if I'm saying sinusoid, I mean cosine, okay? And it's defined to be V sub M cosine omega T plus phi, where V sub M is the maximum amplitude. <clears throat> omega is the frequency in radians per second. T is the period in seconds. And F is the frequency in Hertz, okay? So omega is 2 pi f, and omega is also 2 pi over t, and the units for omega are radians per second. The units for frequency, because students miss this up all the time, are hertz or inverted seconds. The phase angle, and this is a thing that mathematicians don't like. Engineers will put the phase angle in degrees in a sinusoid, and you have to recognize it has to be converted to radians if you have to evaluate, because that's just something engineers do. Okay, so you have to get used to understanding context, whether your angle is in degrees or radians. But the phase angle is phi. And so that shows, and I kind of showed you guys this on the board last week, that if I have two signals here, the difference between them can be represented as a phase angle, right? We talked about Eli the Iceman, voltage and current, leading and lagging. Two sinusoids would have a difference of a phase angle, okay? And the way that you can solve for that is phi would be omega, Delta T, where delta T is the difference between the times. So if that difference between the two sinusoids, let's say where they both cross the time axis is delta T, I can find the phase between them by using omega delta T. You're going to do this in lab. Omega delta T. That gives you that angle in radians. Radians. Okay. The other value that you found in lab yesterday is RMS. RMS is root mean square or effective value of a sinusoid. It's one over the period, the integral over one period, x of t squared dt. The beautiful thing about this equation, because who wants to mess around with this equation, is that when x of t is a sinusoid, it simplifies to the magnitude of the sinusoid divided by the square root of two. This is what you used in lab yesterday. This is the actual equation. If x of t is a sinusoid, it reduces to that. Only if it's a sinusoid. Because students don't like that other formula, they will start dividing everything in its mama by the square root of two. Don't do that. Only, X, only if x of t is a sinusoid. In this, in this case, that means sine or cosine. It doesn't matter. It's still divide by root 2. Okay. 
questions so far? The average or DC value is given by the formula on page two. Okay, the average or DC value is one over the period, the integral over one period V of T dt. So if I give you a sinusoid and it is shifted up the X axis by one volt, then the DC value is one volt. If it does not have an offset and it's on the zero axis, it's zero. So what does offset mean? Offset means sinusoid is moved up or down the vertical axis. So if the offset is zero, it just sits on the time axis. The DC average value is zero. If it moves up, it's one volt. If it was down here at negative five, the DC value would be negative five. So offset just means move it up. The reason you do this in lab is because you don't want the waves on top of each other, right? So you offset one so that they're parallel instead of laying on top of each other. That's what offset means. Yes, because when we talk about power, you will care more then. But finding the average power delivered to a device using a sinusoid, the effective power delivered like to a resistor, there's a DC value you can find or an effective value like from DC circuits. They're the same if you use the effective value. So basically what that means, let's say I have a five volt battery delivering power to a one ohm resistor. Let's make it easy. That would be five watts. Then let's say I give you a five volt AC source, which is a sinusoid. If I use the RMS value, the power delivered to that same resistor is five watts. Phase angles. This diagram I use a lot in class for translating between cosine and sine. The first thing I want you to understand is it has nothing to do with trig properties. Because somebody will always say, that's not where you put the sign. That's not what it is. It has nothing to do with trig properties. It's a phaser diagram to help me to relate these. So what I mean is, and this is the way we quickly do this, is that if I have a sine wave and I want to write it as a positive cosine, I add 90 degrees. If you've memorized this from trig, then you don't even need my diagram. But I will bet dollars to donuts, somebody always puts the wrong angle. Okay, so this is what this is telling you. If I have a sine wave and I add 90 degrees, it's cosine omega t. Or if I have a cosine and I add 90 degrees, it becomes negative sine. Cosine plus 90 is negative sine. Okay, and so here's an example of how I use this because phasers, we write everything as a cosine. So if I say I need you to write sine omega t plus 25 degrees as a cosine, I want you to write sine omega t plus 25 degrees as a cosine, then what I do is I go over here and I put a line at 25 degrees. Sine plus 25 degrees is my vector right there. Because remember, a phasor is nothing but a vector with a real and imaginary part. So when I write it as a cosine, it becomes cosine omega t minus what? Cosine omega t. What angle does this make with the cosine? This 90, 90 minus 25. What's 90 minus 25? 65, right? So it's cosine omega t, and this angle here is minus 65 degrees. So that's what I do with that, is I quickly convert between sines and cosines. Questions? All right. There is an example at the bottom of the page. I want you to answer the questions. It's kind of hard to see, but your reference is 
this dashed line here. This dashed line represents one cosine omega t. That dashed line represents one cosine omega t. Your job is to find for this dark line, the amplitude, the frequency in radians per second, the frequency in hertz, the phase angle, the RMS value, and the average value. So for that dark line, find all those things. The dashed line is your reference point. That You need that to find the phase angle. Okay, we only have five minutes left, so let me help you get this done. Okay, so first, the amplitude for both signals is one volt. So the RMS would be the magnitude over root two, which is one over the square root of two. Zero point seven oh seven. And a lot of times we will put a subscript there so that you know that's VRMS. How are we doing so far? It's not shifted on the vertical axis, so that tells me that the average or the DC value is just zero volts. Okay. To find the phase angle, the phase angle, I look for a zero crossing. So anywhere where I see a zero crossing, so like right here, I would define that as delta T. So delta T would be equal to, and I did this on purpose, it's 1.57 minus 0 0.785. which is 0 0.785 seconds. I put dollar signs so that you can distinguish it from a five. I had somebody ask me that once as well, and I said it's because circuits is money. That's a joke. Okay, all right, the period. To find the period, you would find the zero crossing from, for this main signal. So let's say this dark line to this dark line. That's your period. So my period is 7.07 .07 minus 0 0.785, which is 6.28 seconds, which is also 2 pi seconds. How are we doing so far? So now that I have the period, I can find my frequency. My frequency is one over T. So that's either one over two pi or one over 6.28 or 0 0.159 hertz. So omega is two pi F or two pi over T, which is one radian per second. Notice how I'm really pushing these units. These units are what will jack you up. Units will jack you up. That's the quote of the day. Okay, now we need to do our phase angle. So phi is omega delta T. This is lowercase t, by the way. Omega delta T. Omega delta T. So that's going to be one times 0 0.785 seconds. So the phase angle is either 0 0.785 radians or high over four radians or 45 degrees. Okay. And so finally, that dark line can be written in the time domain as one cosine T. Now, Oh, wait a minute. You're right. It is positive. Sorry. I was talking too fast. Left, it is positive. Shift it to the left. So that's actually leading. It leads the other one. You're right. It's positive. Thank you for that. 
I will clarify that again tomorrow to make sure. You're right, it's positive. Okay, so we have a periodic signal here. So it repeats every two seconds. So the period is two seconds. The average value should be one over the period, the integral over one period, V of T dt. So we also know that the integral is the same as the area under the curve. So one thing I can do is just find the area under the curve for one period and then divide that by the period. So that would be one half times the area of that triangle is one half base times height. So that's one half times one times two minus the area of the rectangle, four times one, So that's going to give me one minus four, negative three, divided by two. So the average or DC value is negative three over two volts. Okay. Okay. To find the RMS value, it's the root mean square. So it's the square root of one over the period, the integral over one period, V of T squared DT. The RMS voltage is the square root of one over the period, the integral over one period, V squared of T dt. Remember, we can't divide by root two because there's only one time we can do that. When can we divide by root two? When it's a sinusoid. This is not a sinusoid, so I have to go through the whole formula. So the first thing I'm going to do is to define my piecewise linear function that repeats every two seconds. So between zero and one second, the formula is 2t. Between one and two seconds, the formula is negative four. And it repeats every two seconds. Okay. So next I'm going to square this. So if I square this, V squared of T is four T squared between zero and one second. Negative four squared is 16 between one and two seconds. And it still repeats every two seconds. All right, VRMS squared, VRMS squared. So VRMS squared is going to be the integral of V of T squared. So I'm going to have the integral from 0 to 1, 4 T squared dt, plus the integral from 1 to 2, 16 dt. The integral from 0 to 1, 4t squared dt, and the integral from 1 to 2, 16t dt. And I'll go ahead and do this for you. That is 8.67 volts squared. And taking the square root of that number gives you the RMS value or effective value for this periodic waveform. So what is VRMS? Um, let me leave some space. You're exactly right, Prana. I should have done that here. So this should have been VRMS squared. I know the number's right. I forgot to do the divide by the period. So this should be one over two. Times that. Make sure, I mean, there's a parenthesis missing. Remember, the one half multiplies all of this. <clears throat> okay. What is VRMS? What is VRMS? You have to take the square root of that number. What's VRMS? 2.94 volts. Very good. Any questions? All right.